All right, so this is the part of the video that you have to listen very, very carefully to everything that I say because on Fred on Thursday, you'll have a quiz on what I go over in these notes. So these are the states of matter notes. And those of you who would like to write these down on a piece of paper, I encourage you to do that because you can use your notes that you take on the quiz that we take on Thursday and it will be a good way to study. All right, so the first part says, what is matter? Matter is any substance that has mass and takes up space. So mass means weight. So for example, your notebook, your computer, yourself, your pencil, your table, your phone, all of these materials have, they have mass and they take up space, which means that they are matter. And all physical objects like what I named are made up of matter in the form of small particles called atoms. So like your notebook, your pencil, your pen, your phone, your computer, all of those things are made up of matter or we might know them better as small particles like we've learned. Now reviewing what we learned about kinetic energy, kinetic energy is the energy of motion. It describes how fast or slow the particles are moving. So remember, all things are made up of particles or matter, and these particles are always moving around. Sometimes if the particles are moving quickly, that means they have a high kinetic energy. And if particles are moving slowly, that means they have a low kinetic energy. Now we have to learn the three states of matter. So all of the physical objects that we know or we talked about, um, they might be able to exist in three states of matter. So for example, if we talk, talk about water, water can exist in three states of matter. It can be solid in the ice form. It can be liquid, just like liquid running water, or water molecules can also be in a gas state. So the three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. And all of these round circles, these yellow round circles, are supposed to represent the particles. So we're going to talk about each state of matter in detail. So first we'll talk about a solid. So what are the properties of a solid? Particles are packed very, very tightly together in a solid. So if you can notice all of these particles, they're packed nicely and tightly together. They're all right next to each other and they're all packed tightly together. So imagine like an ice cube, these particles, um, if they're in a solid form, it's going to be very rigid and it's going to take on a specific shape and these particles will vibrate side to side in place. So even though these particles are packed tightly together, they can still move side to side. They can still vibrate side to side. Even though they can't freely move around and slide past each other, they can still vibrate side to side. So that means that these particles in the solid state will have a low kinetic energy. But something very important to remember is that everything has thermal energy, even a solid, even ice cubes. And this is because all things are made of matter, known as particles, and these particles are always going to be moving around, no matter what state of matter they are in. So even in a solid, the particles are vibrating side to side, so these particles will have thermal energy. Even in an ice cube, the water molecules will be moving side to side just a little bit. So even an ice cube will have some thermal energy. The next state of matter is a liquid. And in a liquid, as you can notice, the particles are still close together, but they're able to move around more freely and they can actually start to slide past one another. So they're not far apart and separated, but they can still slide past one another, which means that these particles will have more kinetic energy than in the solid state because they have the uh, more ability to move around quickly. Now the last state is a gas. Particles in a gas are spread very, very far apart. So notice each particle is spread far apart. 
and these particles can move freely and very quickly because there's more they're more separated so they can move around more freely and these particles have very high kinetic energy out of all three states the particles in a gas will have the most kinetic energy all right now this is another important part so i want you to listen up it says how does matter change from one state to another so how can something go from a solid to a liquid and then to a gas? Or how can something go from a gas to a liquid and then to a solid? Well, matter changes from one state to another when thermal energy, we learned this word, when thermal energy is added or when thermal energy is removed. So by adding or removing thermal energy, the kinetic energy of the particles changes and that causes the temperature to change. So we'll learn this in more detail on the next slide. So again, how does matter change from one state to another? Well, how can we go from a solid to a liquid? When you add thermal energy to a solid, so for example, when you heat up the ice cube, when you add thermal energy to a solid, it's gonna go from a solid to a liquid. And why does that happen? Remember, when you add thermal energy, the kinetic energy will increase. The particles will start to move faster. And as they start to move faster, the temperature will also go up because temperature measures average kinetic energy. So as these particles begin to move faster due to the thermal energy that was added, they're going to start to loosen up and they'll start to change into the liquid state. Now, how can we go from a liquid to a gas state? Well, just like solid to liquid, we have to keep adding more thermal energy. So if you keep adding more thermal energy, for example, when you boil water and you add a bunch of heat to the water that's boiling, soon enough, it's gonna become a gas state because again, the particles kinetic energy will increase. They're gonna start to move faster and faster because so much thermal energy got added and this will cause their temperature to go up and then it will change into a gas state. Now, how about th going the other way? How can we go from a gas to a liquid? Well, it has to be the opposite of adding thermal energy. If you want it to go from a gas to a liquid, then these particles need to slow down. You want to make these particles move less and less so that they can start to get close together again. Well, how can you make them move less? Well, you need to remove. You have to remove thermal energy. So when you remove thermal energy, these particles will start to slow down and their kinetic energy will decrease. And when their kinetic energy decreases, that means that their temperature will also go down. And that's how you go from a gas to a liquid. You make these particles slow down. You make it the temperature go down by removing thermal energy. Now, how can we go from a liquid to a solid? Again, same thing, we have to remove thermal energy. So imagine putting liquid water into the freezer. When you put liquid water into the freezer, you're going to be removing thermal energy from the liquid water. Thermal energy will be removed, it will be taken away, which means that these particles are gonna to start to move less and less and less. Their kinetic energy will decrease, the temperature will drop, it will go down, and soon enough, all of the particles will start to get very, very tightly packed together, and, they'll, and they're going to start to only vibrate side to side instead of sliding past one another. So that's how you go from solid to liquid. All right, now next part is going to be on your quiz on Thursday, so make sure you're still listening up to this point. What are these phase changes called? So when you go from a solid to a liquid, what do we call that? Well, you might know when you have an ice cube that becomes liquid water, you call it melting. So when the state of matter changes from solid to a liquid, we call that melting. Now, how about when water goes or when the state of matter changes from a liquid to a gas? Well, some of us might have learned the word evaporation. So evaporation is when um, the state of matter changes from a liquid to a gas. So for example, you might say, oh, the water evaporated. 
it changed from liquid to gas. Now, how about the other way? What do we call the, the phase change when the state of matter goes from gas to a liquid? We call that condensation. We're going to learn this word in the water cycle unit later on, but condensation is what you call this phase change from gas to a liquid. So when the, when the particles in a gas state switch to a liquid state, it's going to be called condensation. And lastly, what do we call um, the phase change when it goes from a liquid to a solid? We call that, well, imagine putting liquid water in the freezer to become ice. We call it freezing. So when it goes from a liquid to a solid, we call that freezing. All right, so please know these four words, melting, evaporation, condensation, and freezing. You're going to have a quiz on all of this on Thursday, so make sure that you review these, this video. If you want to go back and hear me explain everything again, please do so because you'll have a final quiz on Thursday on the states of matter. All right, so that's it for this lesson video. Thank you for listening.